People Citizens Forum uh, this morning. We'll be going again into the graft and anti graft uh, efforts uh, of the federal government to rid Nigeria of that uh, most deadly as it is, as it is now, uh, what we call corruption. Uh, if you've been monitoring the best FCC, recently told us of uh, some staggering sum of a month's cash retrieved from the houses of individuals, some Nigerians. Uh, well, um, some people have said this is uh, to be as a result of the whistle blowing uh, proposal 5%. Uh, you remember we discussed that when that uh, came up last year, December, and they uh, wanting to find out how effective this whistleblowing thing uh, will be. Some people doubted it, some people queried whether those who give out that information will be able to get their money considering our system here in Nigeria. Some people even doubted the sincerity of EFCC itself and federal government to honor that agreement. Well, we are not sure yet, really. I'm not sure yet if these uh, fresh uh, uh, discoveries are as a result of that whistle blowing thing. Um, whatever it is, um, I doubt there will be people who will not uh, be happy with that effort, with that announcement. I imagine 9.8 million US dollars. Um, interesting. And uh, over 72,000. Pounds uh, in the hand of just in the house of just uh, one person. Um, quickly, um, we have uh, online. Dele Ayodo is my name. I'm sorry for those of you who are just uh, uh, joining us. And I am to be uh, Joseph. There are different issues that we want to uh, look at this morning. Just like Dele said, each of the whistleblower policy, uh, which uh, of course uh, the federal government has even went for that, release uh, uh, a mobile app. Uh, for Nigerians to actually download and use uh, to help uh, not only the EFCC but also uh, the country in fighting corruption as you uh, expose corrupt uh, persons in your community. Uh, we have uh, on the line uh, right now the spokesman uh, for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, uh, Mr. Wilson Wajare. You're welcome to the debate show, Mr. Wilson. Hello. Hello, Wilson. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, morning. Thanks uh, for joining us on the Daybreak Show, Rock City 101.9 FM. Um, uh, Wilson, can you please um, maybe inform, educate us, the whistle brewing uh, process? Um, how, how exactly does it work? Or will it work? Well, I, I don't think... Uh... I want to talk about whistleblowing. I, I, I think um, that uh, policy is still at a new party stage, and uh, those who are really concerned to speak about it is the government. Um, I can only talk about what the administration is doing, which is fighting corruption. Okay. And in doing so, we, we all rely on the cooperation of Nigeria, and especially those who have been on the I think they are not properly done. Especially when it has to do with financial transactions. So, we need to keep up the agency. Can, okay, listen. Can. Okay, can I say, therefore, that the fresh uh, discoveries announcement from uh, EFCC is not as a result of the whistle blowing information? I wouldn't say it is uh, in, as a result of that. Uh, most agencies around the world thrive uh, on credible intelligence and uh, we have been working with such intelligence over time and uh, this, this recovery was not really triggered by uh, this policy. Uh, uh, all right. Now, um, another issue queries from some Nigerians to EFCC is the slow pace of um, prosecution and corruption. Um, a fresh instance would be the Francis Touche case, um, where we've been told that it's going to start afresh after nearly eight years. Uh, Wilson, what would you want to say to Nigerians who raise eyebrows over this kind of story? Well, I think 
think uh, the media has to play a very, very significant role in this respect. I usually feel a little bit when journalists uh, talk about some of these issues. And I believe that as, as uh, these men, you are in better position to inform and educate the people about what happens in such, in such matters. You are mentioning the case of a And I'm sure that those who have been following the matter know that we took him to court. Uh, the court ruled in his favor, and the matter went to court of appeal. We challenged the ruling, and the matter went to court of appeal, and we, 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 we won the appeal, and the director that the trial should start all over again. So it's not that, that maybe the judge is not wanting to process it. It's about issues in the court that affect the trial. There was a ruling in the case of Okay who was the MD of uh, one of the banks that was to court earlier. And based on that ruling, all the other bank executives that were to court applied that their matter should be struck out based on that ruling. And the only one was the appellate court. And the number of years for decision to be taken. And once uh, we want to appeal, and the director that charge should start all over again, that was uh, the arrangement that is happening. It's nothing about um, maybe the law and the part of the U.S. Uh, no, no. It's, it's just the situation that we find. Uh, defendants are always, if they are special inclusion uh, matters, are always prepared to stretch the process because it's convenient for them to ensure that the matter does not go through a uh, trial because they know that the evidence that the commission has seen before the court has uh, I don't cut evidence that we eventually need to. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, um, for the sake of uh, clarity, can you please tell us how much uh, were recovered uh, this particular year, 2017, apart from the Andrew Yakubu loot? I will not be able to give you a round figure because uh, conviction would be hard. Uh, because keep changing on the day and uh, I wouldn't want to give a figure that tomorrow somebody will come and say it's and... Uh, okay, can you give us the major ones then? Can you give us the major the major recoveries? Uh, I don't want to be talking about it so hard, but all I can tell Nigerians is that the Commission has uh, recovered millions, millions of Naira. And, and I want to emphasize that word, millions of Naira. And uh, we are still making recoveries. We are com committed to ensuring that as much as possible, those who steal uh, the resources of this country are not able and enjoy their, uh, their look. When we can recover, we will recover. And at the same time, we will be in the front of us. As you recover these monies, what exactly do you do to them? First, where do you, where do you keep this money? Uh, do you uh, uh, keep it in an account with the AFCC or do you take it to the central bank or it is the consolidated revenue fund? By the law that established the commission, when monies are recovered, they are supposed to be paid into the consolidated uh, revenue fund tradition. But before we do that, when we recover in the recovery account at the central bank where those monies are paid. Especially when the matters have not been determined. Because if we recover on an interim basis, we can't touch that money or in that case, it's finally determined. For instance, the recent recovery that we made in relation to the former GMD of NMTC, so the court has been an interim official order. That money can still not be spent on the matter is determined. On the people involved are protected, and the court finally gives the final official order. That is when God can touch the money and spend the money. But Nigerians should get this and get it clear. The USD does not touch any type of or naira of what is recovered. Everything is whether in Nigeria and paid into the rest of the country, which is known to government, known to Syria, known to everybody. Let's talk about convictions, uh, Wilson. In the last three months, can you give us the figure of convictions uh, secured so far? Convictions are made regularly. I, I can't come here and say we don't have a table where we are recording it every month. But we have offices across the country, and all the offices, every day, whether they are caught through cases going on, in Canada, they are cases going on, in many people, they are cases going on. So we have this at the end of the year that we can.
can tell you that twenty seventeen is the record that we have. We don't use the record of provisions every month or every three months. Oh, right. At the end of this year, at the end of this year, when we prepare our annual report, we will give you a figure of what we have achieved. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson Wajare, uh, spokesperson for the FCC, joining us on the Daybreak Show. All right, yes, uh, you've heard uh, the voice of Wilson Wajare from the FCC. And um, we'll take this break. We want to link up with uh, the chairman of the presidential. Tax Force on Anti-Corruption, uh, Professor Issei Sage, to also get his uh, legal view on almost same issues uh, we raised with Wilson. The convictions, money kept, the supposed slow pace of conviction, and the whistle-blowing proposal. Don't go anywhere. Back the ritual, Rock City 101.9 FM in the city of Abekuta. Uh, we have online the chairman, presidential advisory committee uh, against corruption, Paka Professor Ise Sage. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, can you hear us uh, clearly now? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, uh, thanks for joining us uh, on the ritual, Rock City FM. You're welcome. All right, uh, uh, Prof. Um, we've just been told by EFCC of fresh cash recoveries in the hands of some Nigerians. Some, some Nigerians are uh, perhaps alluding this and attributing this to the whistle-blowing option given to Nigerians um, about this. Um, do, you, do you have any information that indeed it is the whistle-blowing act that has aided this? No, I don't, certainly don't have any definite information. The EFCC has not given me any information, but like other Nigerians, I have a feeling that that is the, uh, uh, what is encouraging uh, some people to come out with information. The same thing. The, the, the other issue, Prof, is that um, when stories like this come up, particularly with big names, Nigerians expect that they will be taken to court, prosecuted, and um, in what can be described as a convenient, comfortable time, these cases are disposed of. But this appears not to be, and is becoming worrisome. What some Nigerians are called slow pace uh, in the ability, or otherwise, I'm a novice, I'm not a learned person, of the EFCC to get convictions. Uh, what is the cause of this okay now between 200 and 2003 and 2015 a lot and lots of cases which started then and are still on now uh, that at that time the criminal procedure rules were very lax and uh, senior advocates many senior advocates who themselves were paid from the proceeds of the crime that was being prosecuted, flung themselves into defense in a manner that was totally unethical. For example, the minute a charge is filed, whether or not it is the correct charge, whether or not the court has position, they are going to file a preliminary objection, particularly that the court has no jurisdiction. They are going to file another preliminary objection routinely that the charge is defective. The courts at that time, not having sufficient, uh, how would I put it, uh, I won't say experience, but um, sufficient control over the courts, would not allow these senior advocates to dribble them into taking the issue of jurisdiction and the issue of the charge and abandoning the issue of corruption. And this may take place over a period of two to three years. After that, when the judge finally rules that he has jurisdiction, 
This same senior advocate would now appeal against that plea to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal takes another two or three years to decide that. Of course, there's, there's jurisdiction. Senior advocate appeals again to the Supreme Court. That takes five years. So, by the time the Supreme Court finally rules that the uh, High Court has jurisdiction, ten years have passed. They now come back to the High Court. You can imagine what must have happened then. Witnesses have disappeared. Some have died. Others have been intimidated. Some have died. The judge, the, the, the counsel who was handling it, has been promoted a judge or has retired. In, a, in effect, things have gone to pieces at that stage. And there are so many of these cases, and they, all of them adopt the same procedure. Learn. In fact, let's go to senior advocates now who have established a profession within the profession of law for, for frustrating criminal cases of their clients. So that was how it was up to 2015. When this went on for too far, the National Assembly passed a law which provided some relief. One, that if you bring a preliminary objection to any charge, the, 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 the trial is compelled. And I want to emphasize this word because I'm coming back to it. It's compelled to take both the issue of preliminary objection and the trial at the same time. In other words, the court will hear the objection, hear the other side, keep his screen and say, go on and hear the corruption case. At the conclusion of the corruption case, the judge is to give a ruling on the issue of jurisdiction. If it has no jurisdiction, the jurisdiction that's the end. If it rules that it has jurisdiction, it will give judgment on the corruption case. That ends that case. If it, it goes straight to prison, and they can, of course, continue to appeal to the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court from prison. That is, that is the, 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 the one aspect of the new rule. Now, the new also says, if you appeal against a ruling of the trial court when the case is on, the judge is compelled, and I'm using the word compelled all the time, to continue with the case in spite of the appeal. So the appeal goes on. The trial of the corruption case goes on. Thirdly, I'm not only, only going to give you three or four of the changes. Thirdly, when the case first adjournment, adjournment is, I won't say complete separation, according to this new law, is totally discouraged. No adjournment. But, and the case must be heard from day to day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, according to this new law. But if adjournment becomes impossible because somebody is ill, something serious happens, the court is only, only allowed to adjourn for two weeks at a time. And such two weeks can be, there can only be five in the whole case. Once you exhausted your five, the case cannot adjourn, you can no longer adjourn. Finally, according to this provision, so this, uh, this law, if a judge who is hearing a case, a criminal case, is promoted to the Court of Appeal, he is compelled to complete that case. He's hearing the High Court. Previously, once you are promoted, you just abandon the case, and the case is started afresh before a new judge. No, no more. You must complete it. Those are the new rules that have come into play. They have improved the process tremendously. But some judges are either still ignorant or are deliberately sabotaging by their misconduct these rules. Because some judges are still giving two months adjournment. Some judges are still stopping the corruption case to give a ruling on a preliminary objection. So the judge, those judges are guilty of gross misconduct. And in spite of the fact that the Federal Ministry of Justice as a monitoring committee, of which my committee is to monitor these cases to make sure these things don't happen. So far, they have not been checked. So that is why 
the delay is going on. It's a combination of the old cases in which there was no control, and even in the new cases in which the control of law has come, judges are deliberately ignoring them or ignorantly ignoring them, and they are not being sanctioned. That's what is going on. Okay, 12. Uh, hello? I'm listening. Hello, yeah. The whistle uh, blowing policy, was it part of your proposals uh, to the federal government or to the president as regards uh, one of the strategies to fight corruption? Yes. Okay. It's one of the proposals we made. What, what is the status of that policy? Because I know there are some bills in this regard were forwarded to the National Assembly uh, for consideration yes. and approval so that it will become law and that will be yes. binding on all parties. What is the status now? They are all before the, the, the National Assembly. We see blood policy, establishment of a special uh, criminal court. All those are before the National Assembly. And I would, uh, if my memory does not fail me, uh, these bills have been there uh, for almost a year now. Uh, not, not quite up to. But certainly they have been there long enough for action to have been taken. So why? And what uh, exactly is stalling the consideration of this bill and the passage uh, so that Mr. President can, uh, can give his assent? Well, I think I think the National Assembly has to be pressured. Because, for example, the one on special criminal court will actually require an amendment of the constitution for that special criminal court to be a superior court under the constitution. So there's a lot of work needs to be done and they will seem to put pressure on the National Assembly. Now, one issue that uh, we have also seen in this uh, anti-corruption war, Prof, is that when the courts uh, when monies are recovered, this time around, the FCC has recovered billions of naira that Nigerians feel could be channeled into some productive and real sectors of the economy to help uh, the economy get out of recession. But this can't happen because of uh, uh, the, the nature of the cases, because it has to be concluded before the federal government can touch this money. Courts grant interim forfeiture uh, to the federal government, yes. but yet yes. they can't touch a dime out of this yeah. money. Uh, don't you think we need to really uh, 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 propose an amendment to the laws so that it will take care of that lacuna? Yeah, that's a very interesting point you raised. And uh, in fact, it has come before both my committee and indeed before the presidency. What is seriously being considered now is even in cases, because I was sitting 90% of the monies that have been seized are under temporary freezing orders. That's why they are not being touched. But it is now being proposed that the federal government should borrow that money and use it. And then at the end of the case, if it is found unjustified, repay it to the party with interest. That is seriously being considered now. So that all the monies which have been seized can be used for productive activities and for the development of this country. Prof, you've just said the National Assembly needs to be pressurized into expediting action on some of these laws that will first yeah. strike a delivery of a judgment. Some Nigerians have also said that a lot of politicking, insincerity, on the part of the ruling government and ruling party uh, has also being a factor. For instance, uh, some people have pointed out to uh, the, you, you talk about unethical behavior, unprofessionalism. Some people have pointed out to the election tribunal in a Edo state, where one of the lead counsel um, is one of the lawyers who has been accused of uneth unethical behavior and attempt to prevent justice. And that this contradicts the change begin with me slogan of the administration. Um, are you also of the opinion that a lot of politics from politicians has been a problem to the issue of corruption war in the country? Well, to, to go to the adult safe case, first, I'm not even familiar with the, with 
what has happened there. Two, if a lawyer, a, 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 a counsel, has behaved unethically, what has that got to do with the federal government? It has nothing to do with the change. You know that such a lawyer is like encouraging you, he's still being paid uh, to lead other teams of lawyers uh, by the same political party or government who is um, clamoring for change. It won't be the political party, it will be candidate. It will be a candidate who, who is doing that. That's not, the, that's not the federal government, that's not the party. You cannot ascribe that. There is no party that has perfect people. There are the people who, oh, of course, in every party that uh, will not behave up to a standard uh, that is acceptable. So I don't want to be I don't want to, to judge any, you know, give any judgment on that issue. And what was the second point you made? The second point I want to make, uh, sir, is this um, what they call outrageous charges uh, by EFCC. Um, 170 charge count, yes. which uh, will eventually begin to be substituted or eliminated, reduced, and so on and so forth. What is responsible yeah. for it and how can we eliminate this? That, that's the thing of the past. You are right. They, 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 it used to be the case. And that the, the result of that was that most cases were lost or or the parties were were were, dis were discharged, or cases were withdrawn. So to counter that, to avoid that, um, my committee has engaged in a series of training of national prosecutors. We have trained uh, over 160 national prosecutors, and we are going to continue training in the month of March, all over the country, in all the six zones. That is state would join the federal, but not to, uh, to train the state government prosecutors on how to draft charges and prosecute cases. So that is being attended to very seriously because it, it is it is a fault that we ourselves acknowledge. Now, uh, Professor Isisage, what is your own uh, take on the uh, controversy that uh, confirmation of uh, the EFCC acting chairman? Ibrahim Magu has generated in recent time. The Senate's uh, rejection of his nomination, uh, his continuous uh, uh, capacity, his continuous uh, uh, heading of the agency in acting capacity, and of course, uh, so many corruption allegations that have been leveled against him. You think it's corruption fighting back, as some has alluded to? Absolutely corruption fighting back. The man has a clean record. He cooked up everything. It was a setup. Cooked it up. Who did it? People who are afraid of his continuing to be there. People who are already under his, um, his uh, under prosecution or under investigation. Many of them in that same Senate. Uh, it was a cook up between them and some other political figures in the, the dark political figures in the corridors of power who are uncomfortable with this independence in the independence. So that is what happened. And he is going to be there, whether they like it or not. Because we must fight wrestle corruption to the ground. That is the number one man to do that job right now. Sorry, sir. When you say it's going to be there, whether you like it or whether not. Whether those, those people like it or not. Whether these people who are being investigated, who are being prosecuted, who are looters, whether they like it or not. Is going to be there. So that means the rejection from the National Assembly will be rejected by the presidency. Well, let us see them reject him again and we'll see what happens. His name has been forwarded. Okay. All right, then we must thank you, Professor right. Issei Sage, Chairman, Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Uh, Paka joining us on Rock City 11.9 FM in the Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a wonderful Bye -bye. day. Okay, well, you heard Professor Isesage loud and clear. Um, interesting issues, uh, the which, of course, I think uh, we need to also get in, uh, put in proper perspective. Uh, we see that uh, a lot of things that are wrong in Nigeria, with Nigeria, uh, will need the cooperation, the resilience, the doggedness of the National Assembly members. Well, uh, not 
a lot that has to change in this country lies in their hands. Uh, I think that's what uh, he just said, that it's difficult correcting the wrongs, um, either by, via the law or via governance and policy. Um, he has agreed that that is difficult to come encounter facing uh, a lot of stumbling blocks uh, on the road. They are determined to do that. We hope they will be able to do that. It's for the benefit of all of us. And of course, we've also, I think uh, we've got clearance, if you match what Wilson has said to what Professor has said on the whistleblowing uh, thing. Uh, no clear cut uh, position uh, yet. Um, so we, it cannot be authentic to say that those money somebody will get a 5% cut uh, from it yet. But overall, all over the world, intelligence is the best of the number one tool for fighting crime. Anywhere, that insecurity or graft crime, intelligence is very key, and that's what they should uh, employ. Oh. Well, well, the point uh, is, once again, that uh, we must continue to uh, mount pressure on the National Assembly members with the House of Representatives and the Senators uh, because uh, they hold uh, almost the master key when it comes to fighting corruption, when it comes to getting it right, and the issues that have to do with the Constitution, and of course uh, restructuring and replanning of uh, the setup in Nigeria. Uh, one issue also which I think is uh, very key is that um, I think uh, for Professor Isesage to say that uh, the so-called security report that uh, indicted uh, Mago. Ibrahim Mago was doctored, was actually cooked up, that is a very serious uh, uh, I think Nigerians need to be informed mm -hmm. about the details uh, of that one. And the other one that uh, told me before we open the lines is I don't think uh, many of our listeners will agree with the position of Issei Sage. Some people I'm sure will feel is uh, trying to run away uh, from the issues there. The Edo uh, State Election Tribunal, where one of the um, lead lawyers there is somebody who has been accused to at a time uh, attempt to frustrate EFCC, to frustrate the corruption war by hiding suspects and trying to obstruct uh, justice. He has been accused, of course, I think he's in court uh, to have obstructed and behave unethical. Um, to say the party or government does not know is a lead cancer because uh, we've been told that it's not the candidate that contests election, is the party. So if he's a lawyer, if they are in the case, um, some people would think the party must also know the okay. party is well, don't forget that there are state chapters of the party. Yes, no, wherever the chapter hits a party. They don't in conflict with what happens at the national level. Okay, that's uh, what we are saying. We will get it right one day. We will get there. Yes, uh, Citizens Forum, that's what we've been looking at. Uh, that's what we will look at uh, this morning. You've heard uh, Wilson Wajari, the EFCC spokesperson, and Professor Issei Sage, senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, actually a professor of law, is a teacher. Uh, in the law department of so many schools across the world uh, talked about this graft issue. All right, yes, we open the telephone lines and other means of uh, involvement for you to be a part of it. 009 8687344 are the numbers to call. If you want to reach us via uh, the code 32120 remains the number. All you need to do is to type rock R O C K in the space, type your message, include your name, and send to 32120. If you're on Twitter, you can reach us at Rock City FM. That's our Twitter handle at Rock City FM. Uh, remember, you have to turn down the volume of your radio set when you call. Go straight to the point. No insult, no claims that you cannot substantiate, and allow others to also contribute. Let's have our first call on the line. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, morning. Yes, my name is Comrade Simita. I will call on the line. Yes, I listen to Professor Akea. Just as what you have said that, you know, we are exhibiting some doubt in our past. That particular point in it. But that's not, not what I want to say. What I just want to say is about this is the of the state because I have done my own. Personal uh, investigative journalism. I have called the hotline. You know, initially I thought that the line, you know, the 
from 9 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the evening. And I asked a question which I want our people to be well informed about. That in case I blow a whistle and I found out that it is a false alarm, or it is being discovered that I am not raising a false alarm, or there is no substance in what I am alleging anybody or any institution of, they said that with immediate effect and analysis, I will be arrested and prosecuted. So our people must please, you know, investigate thoroughly about any allegation before they call that offline. Because that offline is existing, it's very important. And I thank God that this issue of whistleblowing is yielding results. Look at, you know, the billions of naira they have recovered so far. And I now know the reason why there is dollar scarcity in the land. How can somebody be stockpiling 9.8 million dollars in his house? Now we are saying that, you know, there is dollar scarcity. Look at Jesse Bodhi. That is now 25 million pounds of, of Niger, uh, of, of Delta money to the UK. And now we are talking, you know. All right, thank you. Um, Jimmy Taiwo, Maruko. Let's take this next one. Hello. The drop call, you can call again. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Obviously, the yeah, last call this morning. segment. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very happy. 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 I'm very you know, you know that tells me we we want to have our tongue. That's not a concern. I want you to answer me here. This is just a very, 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 we are investigating you are going into on substantiated claims um, these are subject of litigations Alright, approaching two minutes. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, let's uh, take a break. 